Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In what seems to be typical Age of Empires fashion, after no info for weeks, all of a sudden an AoE 3 DLC, AoE 4 beta, and now an AoE 2 DLC are all in the news at once. Today the Dawn of the Dukes DLC, which we already knew was coming out this month, has been confirmed for August 10th, so next Tuesday. In a trailer that dropped this morning, we got a good look at some of the new units in action, and more details about them, so let's check them out. First, the Poles are going to be a cavalry civilization, to no one's surprise. Their unique unit, the Obush, says they're good against things that are expensive and heavily armored, and tear the armor off enemy units. That sounds more permanent to me than the lightest just negating armor, but whether this is a permanent debuff of one armor after every hit, and whether it applies to armor upgrades as well, we don't know exactly. Either way, it sounds like a brand new mechanic being added to the game. We also got more information about their winged hussar. As I suspected, and I think most people probably did as well, it's confirmed this is a reskin of the regular Hazar line, and not a separate unique unit. But they mention it's also going to be given to the Lithuanians as well. Adding alternate skins for certain units does complicate things a bit for new players, but in this case I think they're still pretty recognizable. Something about the unit looks a little stronger though, so I think this may also have a bit of a psychological effect. They also have a unique building called the Fulwark, which replaces the mill and increases the efficiency of nearby farms. We saw that in the first trailer, and while there was some speculation it might have something to do with animals, because they seem to be pairing those things together, it turns out to just be an alternate way to give them something similar to the Slavs bonus. It's not quite the same though, as it's not going to help farms around the town center. So depending on its range and how much that boost is, it could make for an interesting trade-off. Placing your first farms around a mill instead of the town center is generally considered a beginner mistake, as it leaves your units open to raids, but if it's giving you 5, 10, or even 15% more food, that could be worth the risk. It's also slightly larger than the regular mill, so you can finally get that perfect farm placement. As for their unique techs, which I'll wait for some polls to tell me how to pronounce in the comments, apparently they both give a boost to their cavalry. Part of me hopes they take the free scout line upgrades from the Turks and give it to the Poles, as part of making the light cavalry line viable in Castle Age. You see light cavalry sometimes, but knights are by far the more standard cavalry unit in the mid-game, and I think it would be cool to have a civilization that often went for light cavalry instead. I think they could do it in a balanced way, with a few well thought out bonuses and techs. It's sort of implied by the trailer that they don't have access to Paladin, as we see cavaliers a lot in the shots, so I'm thinking this might be a possibility. It's also implied that they have a bonus or a specific need for stone. To be fair, going solely for light cavalry certainly frees up a lot of gold miners that could switch to stone. The other new civilization is the Bohemians. They're described as a gunpowder and monk civilization, the same as the Spanish, but they seem fairly different and more about raw power than mobility. Their first unique unit is the Hussite Wagon. We see it in the trailer and get a look at how it fires. At first glance, they seem to have a very slow attack rate, with only a few cannonballs being fired, but if you look closer, they have two types of projectiles. They fire a large cannonball and then several small shots right after that that look like regular hand cannoneer projectiles. That's a new mechanic for a siege unit and makes them seem a lot harder to dodge. I wouldn't be surprised if the larger projectile also does a bit of blast damage as well. Their other unique unit is the Haufnitze or Howitzer, which is an upgrade to the Bombard Cannon. This upgrade could be a team bonus like the Imperial Skirmisher, but I think it's more likely it's something specific to Bohemians, like the Imperial Camel is for Indians. I expect more attack, HP, and hopefully a slight increase to their blast radius, which would make them pretty scary against bunched up units. They show off its power against a building, which to be fair was already on fire. From this, can we actually tell if it's better than the Bombard Cannon though? Five Bombard Cannons with Siege Engineers bring a Viking Archery Range's HP down by 53%. Of course, a Han archery range looks the exact same, and they don't have the architecture tech. In their case, five Bombard Cannons take its health down 60%. Now, we can see in the trailer the archery range is already on fire, but it's just the first level, which means it's somewhere between 50 and 75% health. If it's on the very low end of that scale, then with or without architecture, even regular Bombard Cannons could recreate this shot. Assuming it's on the high end though, and this is a Viking archery range, then the Haufnitzids could be doing up to 42% more damage, or even more as there could be some overkill. What I'm saying is the new upgrade does somewhere between 0% and infinite more damage than the regular Bombard Cannon line. I'm fairly confident it's in that interval, but I can't say more without additional information. Now it may just be this particular clip, but they also seem like a bit of an awkward unit, with a lot of bumping in the background. They may have a similar unit size to war wagons, which sometimes act this way as well. 
The way we see them used, it almost looks like a battering ram you can put in front of your units to soak up arrow fire, and I'm expecting very high HP and pierce armor. It says one of their unique techs boosts gunpowder and the other improves their monks and monasteries, though it's hard to get a sense from the trailer of what that boost to the monks might be. And finally, as we already knew, they again confirmed there's three new campaigns. There's one for each of Lithuania, Poland, and Bohemia. We get a look at all of the missions, and there seems to be 17 of them, which should make for at least 10 to 15 hours of content all on its own. So that's the Dawn of the Dukes news, and remember you can get this expansion for free if you pre-order Age of Empires 4, or else it costs around $10 US on its own. That's all for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.